just start playing. Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. Our intent tonight is to have this be a quiet, reflective, acoustic evening as we together just remember the most horrible day in history that led, of course, to the greatest day in history. So we've dimmed the lights a bit. I'm going to ask some of you to come up and read scripture in just a moment. And Jamie's going to play some of his favorite Easter time hymns. He'll sing some of them. He might invite some of you to sing along. At the conclusion, we're going to invite you to partake of the Lord's Supper. And then you can put the cups in the trash can at either end there. And that will conclude our service. You're welcome to go have a seat and think and pray a bit, if that's what you're moved to do. Or you're welcome to depart. And then we just ask that if you decide to leave at that time, you keep your conversation down until you get into the parking lot so that we can maintain the, uh, the quiet. Our lives tend to be so loud and chaotic. So enjoy this few moments and think about the great love. going to come and read the suffering servant passage from Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot like a dry root, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. 
He was whipped so we could be healed. God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. For he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so it's okay to get emotional when you read this stuff sometimes we over program and we forget the simple power the word of God. Let it touch your heart. Gemma Ball is now going to read the prologue to the Gospel of John, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Lindsay Bird is going to be reading the account in John 18 of Jesus before Pilate. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, We would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken indicated the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? I am a Jew, Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are in you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is the truth? Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no bias for a charge against him, but this is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shut it back. No, not him. Give us Barbus. And Barbus said, taken, Barbus had taken part in the rebellion. Natasha McCarthy is going to read the sentencing of Jesus in John chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus, had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. 
and they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you, let you know, to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When no basis for a, sorry, that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have the power to either free you or crucify you? Jesus answered, you have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? John McDonald will now read the crucifixion of Jesus. soldiers took charge of Jesus. <clears throat> Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic <clears throat> is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews but that this man 
claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's divide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among themselves and cast lots for my clothing. From Psalm 22. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Katie is now going to read the death of Jesus. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. They lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. But now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jews' leader didn't want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the others. But when they came to Jesus and found he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a man, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it gave testimony, and the testimony was true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Now one of his bones will be broken, and as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Now Duke is going to read the burial of Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and he took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, into which no one had ever been laid. Because it was there, the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. On the night before what you just heard read, we read these words from Matthew chapter 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Lord God, we are grateful for this holy moment. To hear the simple story told with so few words of the greatest event in the history of this cosmos. Our minds cannot get around the infinite becoming finite, life dying. But by faith, many of us have chosen to believe that this is true and that death did not and will not have the final word. And so our trust and our hope is in what happens in two days. And we are grateful for the price that was paid for our sins, and we remember that now. In Jesus' name we pray. You may come up at your leisure, quietly partake of the emblems. You can take them back to your seat if you'd like. You can partake of them here, dispose of the cup. We just ask that this be a quiet time of worship between you and your God. And then when you've done that, we just ask that you leave quietly and 
let the peace of this moment and the magic, the holy magic of this moment stay with you.